Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy X, and coming with season two tomorrow, we decided we're going to be doing the best of season one's tier list right before the season changes over tomorrow. So, we have the best of season one cards here for the wonderful tier list. If you guys are excited, make sure you guys smash the like button, comment all that wonderful stuff, and subscribe if you guys are new. You don't know the gist by now. And I want you to guys speculate what you guys are going to see in season two what do you think is going to happen in season two let me hear it let's talk about it in the comments i think it's gonna be fun and we can get to it we also have a bit of a different format with the tier list today i've gone through and i've organized everybody now remember this is just separated into tiers i'm not doing the left to right right now um but i did go ahead and organize everybody already and we're gonna highlight like this and it just show everybody and we're going to talk you know where everybody is why they are where they are and what's going on so at the end of the video make sure you guys let me know what you guys think where you put everybody and all that wonderful stuff and obviously we're starting off with one of the most easy cards to rank in the entire game and it is stephen curry i picked up this card in the very first game that i played with him dropped over 100 points this card is just absolutely insane he comes with ranked etc on hall of fame he comes with clamps he comes with everything beautiful and wonderful that you would want on a card and if you haven't you know had the likeliness of picking up the Stephen Curry, I feel bad for you because he is just an absolute demon. I love the Stephen Curry card, easily S tier for me. And same thing goes with this Latrell Sprewell. Latrell Sprewell has a really nice jump shot. He just has awesome defense. You can badge him up literally however you would want. And I feel like that is just a great you know, thing to have on the card. If you want to add Rain Dick to Latrell, you can do it. He comes with Hot Zone Hunter on Hall of Fame as well. If, you know. If you want to put that um, quick first step up top, you can do it. He comes with clamps. He comes with some of the most amazing stats you could have on a card. Um, his only thing is, you know, the speed's only like mid 80s, which for some people might be a big deal. For me personally, yeah, it's fine. And Latrell is just a great overall card, and I feel like he fits very solidly um, into that nice little S tier. Some people may want him A. We're throwing him S. That's just how it is. And the same thing goes for Pink Diamond Dr. J. I mean, like, come on. Dr. J, everything you can say about Latrell Sprewell is the same with Dr. J, except he has even better animations. The Rudy Gay base is just wonderful. Best slasher in the game, in my opinion. And if you run him at the two, it is just, it's not fair. It, it is not fair with this Dr. J. Absolutely love him. One of my favorite cards if I could use him because of that wonderful base. But it is what it is. And he, it takes quite a bit of effort to get. So it's, it's okay. Next up, we have a Draymond Green, and it's another way that, you know, you could make this Draymond Green really be whatever you want him to be because you can upgrade every single finishing badge besides the ones that he has already. Um, same thing with shooting and playmaking. You can add whatever you want. Def defense, you can add whatever you want. Um, the personal things you definitely got to do with this Draymond, upgrade his clamps to gold, upgrade Pogo Stick to gold. Make sure you get his Interceptor, Pick Dodger, Rebound Chaser, and Worm all up as well and then you can also add things like range extender on to him if you wanted to flexible release hot zone hunter onto draymond green and then he becomes basically the best card in the entire game um, if you're running small ball he works beautifully for that and i feel like as a small ball center he is perfect also love him as a power forward i kind of prefer him as a power forward but overall insane card uh, same thing goes with Giannis. You can badge him up um, if you want to, but I feel like it's really not necessary with Giannis because he's just that good. You know, Giannis is six foot eleven. He has an insane wingspan. He's got awesome animations. He's the cheesiest card in the game. He can finish inside. Awesome defense. He's super quick. Everything about Giannis is just amazing, and it's kind of like one of those things that every year Giannis cards are gonna come out. And they're always going to instantly skyrocket up to the top of the list just because of how great they are. And last but not least is going to be Galaxy Opal Elgin Baylor. A card that I absolutely loved, but I didn't realize how good the card was until I actually picked him up, used him, and really, you know, got to know this card. Because I'm using my Opal Elgin Baylor after the Evo with um, the Jordan 12s, I'm pretty sure, and the Mike Malone um, Coach Boost. And this Elgin Baylor is one of the most insane cards I've ever used. His all-around defense is just godly. When I use my Elgin Baylor, he has a 95 perimeter defense, a 92 interior. He can dunk on everybody. He has the slasher takeover, amazing shooting, a beautiful release. He's stupid quick with a 98 speed. And I just absolutely love his animations. His dribbling isn't the most insane, but everything else like shooting, finishing, all that sort of stuff just has some really straightforward, easy animations to get down. Um, I think as time goes on, if he doesn't get some sort of boost, he definitely is going to fall to the wayside because 
Elgin is a 6 foot 5 small forward, so it definitely is a negative, but at this current point in time, he's one of the best cards. Now, hopefully at some point we can get a boost so Elgin can play the shooting guard. I feel like that would really, you know, increase his longevity, but we'll have to see as time goes on because there's no way to tell right now. But still, Elgin at Opal, absolutely insane. The next one we got is Diamond John Stockton. Now, this one was hard for me, um, ranking John Stockton, because initially I had him into the S tier because the offensive ability of, you know, John Stockton is absolutely insane because he has the, you know, the 90 standing dunk, or 90 driving dunk, 80 standing dunk, amazing shooting, even has gold clamps um, off rip. But I was looking at it, he does come, you know, only with bronze range extender where we got guys like Seth Curry up here as our PG who comes with Hall of Fame. And I feel like John Stockton is amazing, but he definitely is a decent step down from how overpowered Curry is, which I guess isn't too much of a big deal to him. But John Stockton, I feel like it's just slightly, you know, down in that A tier. I love him. I think he's amazing, but I don't think he's on the level of a lot of these guys that we have in S tier, but he's still a beautiful, wonderful card if badged out correctly could be amazing uh next up we also have manu ginobili into our a tier and one that I, i've realized is a little bit controversial on how high i hold manu ginobili in status and i don't really understand why people don't love manu as much now i know you can add range extender to him but if you upgrade his clamps up to gold his finishing is already insane he has solid defensive stats to go along with that newly added you know gold clamps his playmaking beautiful once you add quick first step because you got to do that and honestly overall i quite like his animations his um pro six moving behind the back and the rest of his dribbling animations are great his jump shot i actually don't mind it. i think it's pretty easy to time it's overall really really nice and i think it's just one that i think he's a card that people just look at and instantly kind of look over but if you actually give him the time of day practice with manu and really get good with him he's definitely an a tier card so we're gonna throw him in there and same thing goes with our next card, Darren Williams. This Darren Williams card is probably one of my top three favorite PGs to use in the game because he's 6'3 and has a 6'10 wingspan. A 6'10 wingspan on somebody like Darren Williams is just, it's out of this world. Now, with my Darren Williams, when I was using him, I did put a three-point and driving dunk boost onto him, um, which I definitely recommend. But you can add a range extender on to this Darren Williams, which is huge. Um, he already has gold quick first step. He has silver clamps, which is amazing as well. Some of the best playmaking you'll find. He has jump shot 22, which is that like Jimmy Butler animation uh, for shooting, which is beautiful. Has the curry slide and a pro five moving behind the back, which is just, I mean, come on. And if you can get cheesy with this Darren Williams, it's gorgeous. Now, obviously, Darren Williams is in A tier because as cheesy as he is, again, he's just not on the tier at PG of Stephen Curry, which is tough, but he's still an amazing overall card that I just absolutely love. And the next guy we got is Amethyst Clay Thompson. Now, I know some people may have Clay down in B or C tier. I tried to throw in some of the Amies that were going to be good, and Clay Thompson to me is just basically the best Amethyst that we have in the game. And when it comes to me, if we exclude Curry, Clay Thompson is basically the best catch and shoot shooter that we have in the entire game. And I absolutely love this card. He comes with silver range extender. He has some of the best defensive badges um, that you really could have on a card, really. He has Hall of Fame catch and shoot. And you can really upgrade any of his finishing badges if you wanted to. Now, Clay's not going to have that ability of speed boosting, cheesing, and doing all that sort of stuff. But he's going to be one of the best defenders that you're going to use in the game. He has one of the best jump shots you possibly could have in the game. He even has good dribbling six. So if you want to kind of get cheesy with it, you could. And you can upgrade any of his finishing matches if you want to kind of make use of his finishing stats inside. To me, Clay Thompson with his just beautiful catch and shoot ability, it was like a no brainer for me to throw him into the A tier. Like easily is A for me. And next up, we have Pink Diamond JoJo White. Now, JoJo White was another card that I... It was a little hard for me to rank. Because he kind of is like John Stockton to me. As like, a, I'm not exactly sure why to rank him. But with JoJo White, we have really good defense. We have a decent driving dunk. It's not great. It's not bad. The playmaking is amazing. His speed is out of this world. Has an 88 mid-range and three-point shot. And he has um, the Paul George base, which is pretty money. Um, his dribbling animation is also pretty decent. And he comes with gold range extender, um, which is pretty nice, as well as some nice play making badges. Um, and you can add clamps to him if you want. So you get clamps, range extender, and a bunch of wonderful stuff. Um, he has a lot of good hot zones. But 
Um, the thing that really hurts this JoJo White for me and why I didn't put him into S tier and why I put him into A um, is because JoJo White doesn't come with pretty key shooting badges. Now, he has gold range center, obviously, which is great, but there's no Deadeye, no flexible release, no green machine, no hot zone hunter at all. And those are four of the biggest badges that you could have on a shooter. So while JoJo White does have some amazing stats, uh, I think those lacking badges kill any sort of moment that you could have for him, uh, for me personally. But overall, it's still a wonderful card. I'm just not sure that I'm willing to spend, you know, 150 tokens to pick him up. And the next one we got, Chauncey Billups' is Pink Diamond. I mean, Chauncey Billups... Um, I was hesitant at first, but 6'3", the 6'6", wingspan, has 6 Hall of Fame badges, which is great. We even have Gold Clans and Intimidator. The defense is amazing, his playmaking is amazing, his shooting is amazing, and finishing is real solid as well. Now, again, he's like John Stockton to me, where he has bronze range center off rip. He's got good defense, he's got good playmaking, he's got good shooting, and if we got a then <laughs> not good driving dunk. Um, our tendencies are pretty meh. Nah. And our animations overall are solid. Now, a lot of people that I've talked to that have used this, Chauncey Billups, love him, think he's a really good card, but also agreed that he's nowhere near on that level of Curry. And I feel like that's just the the bad happenstance of having such a good card in Curry is that a lot of these other PGs are so good, they're just not on the same level as him. Now, the next up we have is George Mikan. Uh, Mikan is one of those cards that I feel like everybody is... You have to love because he's 6'10", 7'1 wingspan, and when it comes to just being a super quality center at everything, he's got it. Really solid shooting badges, you know, catch and shoot, flex for release, green machine, hot zone hunter, and pick a popper. Awesome defensive badges when it comes to rebounding, playing in the post, um, and just playing good defense overall, and is insane in f finishing um, around the rim, post fades, post hooks, all of that wonderful stuff. George Mikan has got... Um, Tendencies are a little iffy. His jump shot is money. I absolutely love him. For me, George Mikan is easily into A tier. Um, he's slowly sli slipping as time goes on. Um, but I think when it comes to centers, at least people that you can play at the center position, I feel like George Mikan and Draymond right now are just at that upper echelon of it. And then last but not least for the A tier, we have Pink Diamond Dominique Wilkins. Now, Dominique Wilkins is insane. Um, with Wilkins, you do have a six foot ten or six foot seven with a six ten wingspan. You know, small forward shooting guard, insane at the basket, pretty solid defense and pretty solid shooting. And then you can add quick first step to him to really, you know, make that <laughs> insane. Um, you can get that up to a gold clamps as well. And then you can actually add range extender on it to your Dominique Wilkins. And if you do those three key things, I really think it's over for you because Dominique is just absolutely insane. Now. Um, his defensive tendencies definitely aren't too good, and his jump shot to some people definitely are a little bit iffy, as well as his dribbling moves, which is why I threw him in A. I think offensively, if you know what you're doing, you can capitalize on this Dominique Wilkins. His size and overall defensive ability as well really help him out. He's just, again, not on to par with Latrell or Dr. J, because the dribbling is amazing, the shooting is amazing, finishing is amazing, and defense is amazing, where Dominique is iffy in one or two of those. So that concludes it for the A tier. We got B tier next, and obviously this is the one that's got the most cards in it. So we're gonna have to go through this one a little bit quick. First one is Bob Cousy. I like him. Exchange award. He's got some good defense. He's got some decent finishing, although he can't dunk. His shooting is good, um, but his upgradable badges are pretty meh. Like they're they're definitely pretty and eh. there's you know not too much about Cousy, I guess that I can say that's absolutely insane. But he just to me. Feels like that mid-tier right now of just really solid at everything just doesn't wow me anywhere. Um, Paul George is that same thing where he's just mid-tier of everything. You know, Paul George is a really good defender. He's a pretty good shooter. Lacks range of center, which is tough. Um, can finish at the basket, really nice. And can speed boost Planet pretty well. Um, his dribbling animations are pretty solid. His jump shot is really nice. But... He doesn't pop out to the level of OP to me as these guys do. You know, with Dominique Wilkins, you can get that range extender and quick first step and just feel godly. Uh, with somebody like Clay Thompson, who's playing at the three, like he is just so good at shooting and playing defense that it is out of this world. And Paul George, I just feel like he plays really solid um, all around and just doesn't impact insane in every category to really make me want to put him into A tier. 
Uh, Ralph Sampson is a card that is actually hindered by one big thing, and it's actually so massive that he had to go into B tier. And he's got a 44 speed. Like, Ralph Sampson has Hall of Fame Intimidator, which is one of the best patches in the paint. Has awesome defense, um, really good post game. He's obviously 7 foot 4, which is massive. He can even shoot the 3 and midi, and has awesome tendencies for in the paint. Um, this jump shot is definitely iffy, but he is just so slow that I had to put him into B tier. Um, next up, we have Moses Malone, and Moses Malone to me is, unless you badge him correctly, and it's expensive, he's just a worse Mikan to me. Um, you have really good defense, really good post game, solid speed, and decent shooting actually. A really good mid range and a decent shot three and a good jump shot. But the thing with him is, you can't get great shooting unless you give him some sort of coach boost, shoe, and floor general to move that up because he only has a 63 three point shot. And he comes with three bronze shooting badges, um, catch a shoot, pick a popper, and pump fake maestro. But he can get every single badge upgraded to at least a gold if you wanted to. Now, if you do that, he can be amazing, but it's just such an expense that I don't really recommend it um, to a lot of people. You can also add clamps, but he's just so, so, so expensive. And I feel like the amount of time and empty they have to put into Moses Malone just isn't too worth it. So he's just like a, where's George Mike into me? Next up is Diamond LeBron James, and this is one that I feel like I, I know I might get a little bit of flack for, but I just, I can't do it, man. LeBron James is an amazing, amazing card, and obviously an even better player. But LeBron doesn't have a quick first step, and most of his badges are silver, and it really hinders him. He's an amazing finisher at the basket, but getting to the basket is going to hurt with that quick without the quick first step, because you can't even add it. If you could add it to LeBron James, I would have thrown him into A tier without a doubt but you can't upgrade anything but like four badges and they're all in defense like pogo sick moving chuck box and worm which are all pointless um and overall he's really solid it's just that one big thing of quick first step not even being an option i couldn't do it um next up is kevin durant which is the same story of um lebron james where there's just a few bad sh tweets that if he had them it's over yeah he has bronze range bronze clamps and silver quick first step that's that's a negative we can't upgrade any of those we can actually upgrade a few badges but none of them are really like vital or key so while he has bronze clamps if you go against somebody who has you know a high level of quick first step you're blown by kevin durant every single time but the thing that holds kevin durant up in there is because he does have at least silver quick first step his offensive ability is insane uh, he can speed boost like crazy, he can dunk in everybody's head, he can shoot the three ball amazing. Kevin Durant's animations are just godly. Um, it's just, defensively, he's definitely a bit of a liability. And next up, we have Kyrie Irving, who is in another boat like Moses Malone, where there's a decent upfront cost to make this Kyrie Irving um, insane. And that is, you really gotta give him some good defensive shoes, and you have to upgrade his defensive badges like no other. But once you do that, Kyrie Irving is basically a juiced up Bob Cousy with a better release, has gold range extender, um, just has worse defense overall. Um, Kyrie Irving is great. His animations are honestly pretty good. I love the jump shot on Kyrie and I just love him in general. The finishing on the basket is just insane. Um, but he can't dunk and you really got to put a lot into him to make him good defensively. But the reason that he's so high on this list, despite being such a black hole on defense, is because offensively he's just too insane and uh, next up we have diamond jerry west and diamond jerry west to me is literally like tied with bob Cousy. i feel like if you put one or two of these higher than the other it just doesn't make sense man bob Cousy and jerry west are virtually the same minus a few changes so i just always group them together i just don't feel very here or there about them they're very mid-tier um if we get later versions of them like if jerry gets you know his eventual pink diamond or opal he's going to be insane but this current diamond um is just lacking a few things for me like no range and things like that next up we have alan houston who i've been talking about black holes on defense and all of that wonderful stuff but alan houston is the you know the definition of that but Allen Houston is just such a good shooter with his Ray Allen base, all of his amazing shooting badges, including range extender that 
I'm throwing him into B tier. If you want to knock him down to C, that's cool. But I feel like B tier is the highest you can throw Allen Houston. He's just such an insane defender. He's just so, or, I mean, such an insane shooter that you really can't knock him too much. And if you have gone against somebody who really knows how to use Allen Houston, you know how much of a nightmare game that can be because they are just, he's just too overpowered when used correctly. I am nervous of a future Allen Houston that gets some form of clamps and quick first step because it is going to be, it's going to be hell and unlimited. And last but not least, into the B tier is Magic Johnson. Now there's one big thing I didn't realize about Magic Johnson when I went through and did a lot of his challenges and it completely kills Magic Johnson once you actually realize it. He has some of the most insane badges and insane stats that a card could have at this point in the year. And then you look, he can upgrade a total of four badges, Worm, Rebound Chaser, Bailout, and Cross Key Scorer, all of which are already gold, which means it's pointless really to upgrade them because it's magic, he's a PG, and those really don't matter too much. And he has no quick first step. So your PG... Oh, he has no quick first step and no clamps. So your PG can't, you know, beat anybody to the basket, and he also can't play that great of defense. And that killed it. I initially had magic up into like the A to S tier, and then I like took a deeper dive into his stats, and I was like, no way we can put him up there. So he's down to B. I know a lot of people love magic, but if we're keeping it a buck, this magic just is not up to par with what we need at this point in time. I know he's tall, I know he's six foot nine. But I would much rather take Curry, Darren Williams, or anybody else in it right now. Just because even though he's taller, they play better defense. And now we have the C tier. Um, a lot of my guys. And I'm going to put these three in at the same time. And it's Diamond Willis Reed, Diamond Bill Russell, and Pink Diamond Bob Lanier. With the three of these guys, they are all insane defenders who can hit the mid-range, can't shoot the three, are pretty quick. And that's really about it other than being post gods. Um, now, if I had to rank them, I would definitely put Willis Reed as the best out of these three. Um, if you want defense, Bill Russell is going to be number two. If you want offense, Lanier is going to be number two and vice versa. But I have Reed, Russell, and then Lanier technically for me. Now, again, why these guys are grouped is they're just really good post players and defenders. And that's really about it. Um, Bill Russell doesn't give you too much offense outside of a post hook. Willis Reed gives you some really good post offense and a really capable midi. And Bob Lanier is good um, all around, besides being able to shoot the three. But he lacks a lot of key badges to put him above these guys. So I dropped him down below. You know, Bob Lanier is missing some pretty key things. I think if I remember correctly, he might be missing like Intimidator or something like that, which is huge. Um, and that's just, oh, he's missing it like Intimidator, Pogo Stick, and Post Move Lockdown, and it's just, it, it is not my cup of tea. Um, next up, we have a JaVale McGee, and JaVale McGee is, again, another one of those cards that is great because he's tall, but has good defense and dunking ability, and that's really about it. You know, JaVale McGee is like an interior present, and that's really about it. And he is pretty slow, so I had to throw him into seeds here. I love JaVale McGee, and it's awesome that he has such a nice card early in the year, but yeah, I can't warrant it. And next up, we have Allen Iverson. And this was another one that was tough for me to rank because, you know, Allen Iverson, I feel like, is just as good as Kyrie Irving on offense because Allen Iverson has an 80 driving dunk, which can make him a little bit better. And he actually has better defensive stats. But the thing is, Kyrie Irving gets a range extender already. You can't even add it to Allen Iverson. And Kyrie can get clamps added. You can't add it to Allen Iverson. Um, Iverson has, you know, insane on-ball steal tendency of a 95. He has the tray break base. He has amazing dribbling animations. And his ruby that I picked up uh, for my starter pack was one of my favorite cards that I've used so far in the year. But Allen Iverson is just such a hole on defense that it just, it's really bad. People will attack him every single time. And the thing is, you know, being six foot with no defense is such a hindrance at this point in the year that I just can't do it. And last but not least in the C tier is Isaiah Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas, I feel like this is one that I'm a little bit sad to put on here, but, you know, Isaiah Thomas, he just doesn't give me as much on offense other than playmaking that I would want. And he's really just a defensive playmaker, and I feel like... <laughs> You know, everybody else can do that. You know, once you badge Kyrie correctly, defensive playmaker. Jerry West, defensive playmaker with a better release. Bob Cousy, defensive playmaker with a better release, you know. Chauncey Billups, a defensive playmaker that can do everything else. 
Darren Williams, defensive playmaker that can shoot like crazy. John Stockton, defensive playmaker that can knock on everybody's head. And, you know, Isaiah Thomas does what all these other guys can do, just worse. So I had to put him into the C tier. And at last, we have the D tier. And this one was just kind of like cards that I wanted to show off that were really good um, throughout the season, but obviously are not even close to being on par with the rest of them. And these are Maurice Cheeks, Kyle Lowry, and Gus Williams. These are sh shout outs to three of the cards that were insane when they were first available, but aren't that good right now. And I figured it would be cool to throw some of these guys in here because Maurice Cheeks was like the first card that I personally used as my PG that really helped me through a lot of domination. Kyle Lowry and people got him realized just how insane his jump shot was, how crazy his dribbling six were, his defense was amazing, and he was godly. And y'all remember the time of Gus Williams where he caught the ball speed boosted down the floor with his quick first step at 96 speed and got every damn layup on you because nobody was quick enough to stop him. So I had to throw him in here. Obviously, they are nowhere near up to par with a lot of these guys, but they're still fun um, to use. And I honestly would argue sometimes that Kyle Lowry could play better than Allen Iverson. So maybe, maybe we could put him up. But this is the final tier list for our se best of season one cards. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. Um, remember, I have my reasoning for everything and obviously you have yours. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new. We are on that Reddit to 10K. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you all in the next video.